I want to share a, a very, very important word with us this morning, uh, and I, I'm speaking about spiritual gift explosion. And one of the things that we highlighted in the uh, New Year's Eve and into this year, Pastor Leon and myself, is that this year is a time of great change to bring newness. And for many people inside the church and outside the church, it will even have some bumps in it, and the bumps are to bring things back into a place of newness and order. And so sometimes we think, well, if God's going to make something new, if I had an apple before, He's just going to give me another apple. And so it, it's only a little bigger. But in actual fact, sometimes we had an apple, and the Lord says, well, I'm going to give you a chipmunk this time. And it's totally different, and so there are some things that have to change. You'll see it in our province, you'll see it in our nation, we've spoken about this, and you'll see it in every facet of society because there is a, what we call a, a new beginning. And one of the elements that we've been uh, referring to is grace. It's the grace of God that brings us into the freshness and newness of what He has for our lives. So I'm going to ask you to turn in your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 1 Corinthians ch chapter 12, and we're going to talk about the gifts of Holy Spirit. Some say that there are 21. They'll take the 5 of Ephesians 4, the 7 of Romans chapter 12, that's 12, and then the 9 of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and they'll get their 21. I know someone who has made it into a 24. Uh, there are others, and I would be one of these, uh, who make it into a at least 28. In fact, probably if you heard me to the finish, I would probably be closer to 35 to 40 and be saying that there are still more and we're discovering what they are. And so there are gifts of Holy Spirit. Let me mention this because it's important, and Leona or myself will unpack it in the days and weeks ahead, but sometimes we confuse gifts with our talents. And we think, I was born with a talent, and uh, I have this talent, and I'm going to use it for the Lord, and that's my spiritual gift. In actual fact, that wouldn't be a spiritual gift, and that's why we'll say more about it to give understanding of it, but we have good-hearted people who are offering their talents, but that's not your spiritual gift. Spiritual gifts take talents and do something different with it. There are other people who will say something like this. You'll hear this said. I, I give God my strength. This is my strength. This is where I really shine. And they're not being proud. They're just saying this is, this is what they really do well. That's not your spiritual gift. There might be some correlation that you'll find, but that's not a spiritual gift. A spiritual gift brings the supernatural help and presence of Holy Spirit. And there are varieties of gifts. And the first thing, I'm, I'm going to probably, I'll, I'll say three or four important points, but I, I'm, I'm not going to miss the opportunity of just sending out some sentences that you might, have thought, uh, might not have thought of or heard before. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 is all about diversity or difference. And the interpretive key, and what I mean by interpretive key, that is, if we were wanting to interpret or understand the gifts of Holy Spirit, the key is to relate it to our human body. That's what's going on in 1 Corinthians 12. And so, the most important point for us to realize right at the top is that we were meant to be different. And we're meant to celebrate each other's difference. But most of us love to live by the Xerox photocopy machine. Most of us try to make someone else just like ourselves. Most of us 
try to say, listen, we need to all be the same, and we speak of uniformity. We want everyone to have the same form and shape. That is not God's design. When you see something like that, you know that that's not the working of the Lord. It doesn't mean that it's of the enemy. It just means that people are trying to force other people into a same mold. It's hard to be different, to celebrate difference. We even in church, we have our favorites, and I mentioned it a couple of uh, messages ago, how that we'll say, well, the evangelist is too fluffy for me. The, the prophet, you know, kind of gets mystical on me. The, uh, the apostle, you know, is out there with vision, and who can follow that uh, person? And uh, the, uh, well, we go through them all, all of them. Until the end, what we say is, the one that I probably like the most is the pastor. Just give me the pastor, because the pastor, you know, he or she knows exactly where I itch. And, and yeah, 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 right, right there, right there. And, and, you know, and goes like this, and we feel good and cozy. But what we're missing is fivefold of Ephesians 4, diversity of Romans chapter 12. There are seven gifts mentioned there. And then these gifts of 1 Corinthians 12 as they manifest as well, and other gifts that would be part of this whole release of God's manifold wisdom of how to do it. And so what we're talking about here in 1 Corinthians 12, I'll say it again, difference. And realizing that someone else is going to be different than you or different than me. And it doesn't mean that we would put up with uh, some kind of extremism or radical uh, nature that takes us off, uh, off the road, but it does mean that there's difference, and it's of God. And, you know, we say no two snowflakes are the same. I don't know. I'd never say that because who's checked, right? If you live in Canada, who's checked? But none of us have the same fingerprint. It, God celebrates difference, and our, our body isn't just one eyeball, and uh, our body isn't just one ankle. And so you have this interpretive key that's going to go on here. The things that I want to mention relate to the gifts. The Greek word, which ordinarily might not be that important, is charisma or charismata. So if you have an automatic car, it means auto, one, and matic, motion. It goes in one motion. You've got automatic. You don't have to shift gears. It's automatic. It goes in one motion. If you have a charismatic, then you have charis and motion, matic motion. What does charis mean? It's graces. That's why you can't talk about grace and not talk about gifts. If, if it's a grace church, if it's the grace of Jesus Christ, then what we're talking about is the graces in motion. I'll hear some people say, I love church. I don't believe in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I use my talents and my strengths and all of that for the Lord, but I don't, I don't believe that. Listen, it's the graces in motion. They need to be activated. The Bible says you can neglect the gifts. You can uh, not use them. Sometimes the gifts need to be stirred up. And so what we want to do is say we welcome gifts of Holy Spirit in our lives. If, uh, and probably in a crowd like this, uh, there could be a third to a half at least of the people here who say, I don't know what my gift is. I will even have, this is how important it is to me, I will even have prayer times where I will go before the Lord and ask the Lord to do something more with the gifts that are bestowed in my life. The other thing about gifts is they're permanent. They're not going to go away. They can become less effective by our lifestyle and all of that sort of thing, but they don't go away. They're, they're part of who we are, and it's not as though we have a tap always to turn it on and off, but in actual fact, there's a responsibility that's attached to this. And so that's why we want to open it up and be able to, at the end of this service, 
uh, we're going to pray for people. There are several ways that you can uh, release gifts and activate gifts in people. One is sovereignly God will do it. Just God to, will just do something for you and you'll sense and know and move in gifts of the Holy Spirit. Other times it's someone prayed for you. It doesn't have to be somebody who's, you know, at the front. Uh, uh, it can be someone who's part of the prayer team. Uh, there's special prayer. Lord, we activate the gifts. Another uh, way is impartation. It's amazing. Uh, this one I, I have always tried to be sensitive to the Lord. And there are times when I've been prompted to have someone lay hands on me, the doctrine of laying hands, Hebrews chapter 6, lay hands on me for impartation. And then what I want to do is see that matured. And so I'll pray about it. I'll have special time set apart. Lord, take me to another level. I want to progress in this. So that's what we're talking about. Charismatic. Graces in motion. What are the graces? The gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now notice this in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We'll just uh, land on some things here that are important to us. And the first important thing is verse 11. It says uh, of chapter 12, but one and the same Spirit works all these things, referring to the gifts that are mentioned just above. And uh, we can even have uh, other services where we give some understanding in a greater way to those, but it says, and one of the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as He wills or as Holy Spirit wills, as God wills. Do you know that God, upon your salvation, actually has distributed a primary gift and secondary gifts to us, to you and to me? They're they're on your life. God willed them. It's sovereignty. God has gifts. You say, but you know, mine only work on Sunday. I don't want to get into a spitting contest with you, but in actual fact, those gifts will work every day. They work inside the church and outside the church. It was a revelation to me my first time with gifts of the Spirit to go to a restaurant and have a sense with my server that a gift was going to be released. And I didn't have a choir behind me. I didn't have Bats Rye or Pastor Matt, you know, leading in a certain song. I didn't get a thus saith, ye my children, you know, King James language going. It was just, uh, say, I, I just wonder, you know, I was sensing this. I've got this thing, you know, and here, do you mind if I just share something with you? And gifts, it can happen out there, in here, naturally supernatural. So we see that God distributes. And then we come down to verse 18. And here are a couple of points that I want us to see. Verse 18, but now God has set the members, each one of them, in the body just as he pleased. In a local church, that's what we're talking about. If you come down to verse 27, and you are the body of Christ and members individually, the you is plural. It's speaking of the Corinthian local church, and it says, Together in the local church at Corinth, you are individually members of it. So when we're looking at verse 18, it says that God has set you in the church, in the local church. If somebody unauthorized leaves church, will we notice it? Of course we will. If somebody authorized comes and joins our local church embassy, would we notice it? Of course we would. You say, well, why? How can you be so sure of that? Well, most of all is if you pulled my finger off, I would notice it. If you added another finger, I would notice it when I'm worshiping and think, wow, six, you know? I would notice that. If a doctor pulled my spleen or appendix out, I would look down one day and say, oh my goodness, yes, it came out. If a doctor accidentally gave me a second spleen, I might say, oh my goodness, I've got two of them working now. I don't know if that's possible, but I thought it's a a good illustration. 
It's noticeable. Why? Because we're set. Set. Have you ever thought of yourself that way? I've heard over the years, honestly, not so much in evangelical, charismatic churches, but more in mainline churches, where one time in the year somebody gave some money and so they said, that's where I sit. And so, you know, they have that kind of set. I'm set here. Uh, if I could finish that one, it would be, my mind's like concrete, I'm mixed up and set. Okay? Then what's spoken of here is different. God set you. God set me. Think about it. And not just set. Like, I'm not standing here, and you might think that I'm joking, but if you read chapter 12, you'll see that it, it's talking this way because it compares the spiritual body of Christ and gifts to our physical body. I'm not standing here in my liver over by the music stand. I'm not a part like that. My liver is set in my body. It works as a whole. Like, I can tell you honestly, all of me is inside this shirt, jacket, and pants and shoes. Uh, th there's nothing somewhere else. You will not find something more of me over there. This is it. In the same way, grab a hold of this. Think about it. God has set you. Set. It's appointed. You actually, and you know, first of all, the joy of being set and knowing how you're set. Secondly, how you're able to be set with others. Nobody is set individually on their own. Team is probably a better word for church these days because we understand what team is. We're joined together. We do it together. We're set, and I'm set beside others. And so we recognize we're set. That's verse 18. Let me move on to verse 24. But our presentable parts have no need, but God composed or mixed together or blended or united the body having given greater honor to the part which lacks it. What's being said here is God didn't just set you or me in Embassy Church or the church at Corinth just on our own. But He actually mixed us in with others. And all of the rest of the Bible would bear this out. So that you're set with Susan, Jordan, Mildred, Agnes, Bill, Samuel, all set. Now, if it happened one day where I think, oh my goodness, I came to church and I left my lungs at home. That would be the oddest thing. Paul says, this is how I want you to think about spiritually what's going on. Nobody has that sort of thing. The body stays together. Why? Because when the body is functioning in being set and gifted and moving together, nothing is impossible. This is what it is. So it's set, we're set, then we're molded, or my version, New King James Version I'm using today, says composed. Pretend you're not in church and talk to me. What does your version say? Tempered. Anybody else? Verse 24. Designed, combined. I love that. Together, assembled, mingled, tempered. Do you see this? This is what God has done. And he says that when, when I made Adam and Eve, it's in the scripture here, I could show you. When I made Adam and Eve, I put all the pieces together. I didn't come here, spirit, soul, but no body. I didn't come here, body and soul. I came here, spirit, soul, and body. I function as one. My liver says, but I'm different from you eyes. I think I'm better than you. No. The eyes say, man, I'm glad I've got a liver. The liver 
doesn't speak against the elbow. The elbow doesn't speak against any other part of the body. Now, look at how far Paul goes. Catch this. We, we, we just have to have a look at this when we're brought together because it's about how we come together and honor one another. Usually, if you get the stage, you get the honor. That's how the 21st century North American church works. Whoever gets the stage gets the lights, gets the microphone, and gets maybe applause, but you get the honor. Take it against or beside what the Bible says here. Verse 22. No, much rather, those members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary. Weaker here is referring to our internal organs. It appears as though our internal organs are weaker only because they're not seen. You see my face, you see my hands, you see parts of my body, I kick my foot up, something like that, you see that. But you can't see my appendix. You can't see my liver. You can't see my lungs. You can't see my heart. And the Bible says that these will appear to be weaker because they're covered. And so you want to give greater honor to those that appear weaker, but they're necessary. Trust me, I do not want to lose my heart right now. My heart is very important. I could say, but I'm a speaker, I'm talking now, and I'm up on the stage. But the truth of the matter is, if I lose my apparent, or it just because it's not seen, my heart, I'm in real trouble. My mouth's going to stop very shortly. The only exception to that is apparently when you chop the head off of a chicken. They go a little longer. That's just a, by the way, Yes. Verse 23. Look at how the Scripture speaks here. And verse 22 is the inner organs. They're not seen, and so you give honor to them. Verse 23. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, on these we bestow or set in place greater honor and our unpresentable parts have greater modesty. What's being spoken of here? It's referring to male and female genitals, private parts, which because God's speaking here, it's proof that God desires modesty. If you see someone walking down the street and they say, I'm just walking naked, this ought to be okay for me to do, whether it's in New Orleans or Toronto or Oshawa, uh, according to God's standard, no. There's a modesty. And what do we do? We cover ourselves in our private parts. In the same way, Paul is saying here, that you are with modesty in your natural body. So it is. And how important those parts of our body are in the same way in the body of Christ. Do you know that there were people who were serving coffee today in, in our cafe? There are people who were, who were and are, came early, and they're looking after all of our sound, our media, all of that sort of thing. There are people that we don't see here that are down in the kids' wing. There are nursery workers that we don't often see at all. It's like private parts. They're covered. You don't see them. Paul is saying, listen, if you're going to function properly as a body, then it's so important that you would give honor so that the whole body functions together. And so you're talking about Again, this interpretive key, a physical body, so it is in the spiritual. And it's talking about how these people are to work together in a local church, and then it goes into the gift mix. Let me give you, so verse 18 speaks of God has set the members. 
Verse 24, God has composed or mingled or mixed together. Verse 28 says, says this, And God has appointed these in the church. Again, God is set, appointed certain ones in the church. First apostles, second prophets, third teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, then helps, administrations, and varieties of tongues. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all, are all, are all? The answer is no. No. We're a church like Corinth, where some have this, some have that, some have that. And God says, I've appointed it that way. It's interesting how we treat our differences, though. There can be someone after service who's standing in the aisle and crying. And a person who has that soul-winning evangelistic touch will run right, right by that man or woman and go out into the atrium because they want to reach so-and-so who they invited to church and came to church, but uh, they don't know the Lord, and they lead them to Jesus. And somebody else who has a mercy gift walks over and says, I apologize. I just apologize for, for Jim. He walked right by you. And my heart goes out to you. And they pray and they solve the problem or something like that. What is it? It's gifting. I know that we all can be better and sensitive and all of that. But it's just a highlight. The differences. God has made it that way. Some are this, some are that. Notice it gets into first, second, third, then, then, and finally gives some more. I, I'm not sure. I have some thoughts in verse 28, but wrong time to get into it deeper. It's just that God has set an order. He set the sum, the sum, the sum, the sum. Uh, I can try to, you know, I, in fact, I've tried for years to become a part of the worship team. And, uh, you know, I've, I've thrown out the hint, and, you know, uh, I think I might have uh, auditioned for Pastor Matt, and, uh, you know, I did it my way, and then Pastor Matt said, yeah, you go and do it your way. <laughs> and uh, it was, hello, hello, Pastor Matt, and uh, the audition was over. Uh, it's not going to work for me. I've got, I've got some other things. This is how a body works. Now, here's what's really interesting. Is the greatest adventure, because we're talking about a journey in grace, the greatest adventure in walking our Christian lives is to discover that beyond our talent, which is good, beyond our strength, which is real good, our spiritual gifts. The reason why we don't depend just on our talents or our strengths is those don't always translate into others or God. There are things that God wants to accomplish. There are things that He wants to do as we touch others. I'm not saying that talents and strengths mean, uh, strengths mean nothing, but I am saying that a healthy church has a primary activation of spiritual gifts of those who have been set, verse 18, those who have been mingled with others. They recognize that alone I'm only a member, but in a local church I've been mingled with others, arm to arm, locked in. And that some will have that, some will have that, some will have that. Some had that and it grew into that and into that. And all together, this is where God looks down. And he says, when I see a church functioning this way, it shows the many-sided and manifold wisdom of what I've planned for the church. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10. Stand with me, please.
Here's what we'd like to do is to recognize that God has a gift for you. Think about that. You've heard of money being held in a bank account and until the person goes and cashes out, it'll just sit there. Scripture says, 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 14, neglect not the gift that is in you that was bestowed by the laying on of hands. Don't neglect it. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verses 6 and 7 speak of stirring up the gift. Make more of it. All of Scripture, especially the Gospels, tell us use it. Use it. We often say use it or lose it. In this case, you're not going to lose it. It'll just sit there. We're going to give account. It shouldn't be a negative or a fearful thing, but we'll give an account. What did you do with what I gave you? And this is where we say, Lord, I'm ready. I'm ready for this. Here's what we'd like to do this morning. I believe that the Lord is in this. I'm going to ask our ministry team, our prayer ministry team, to come across the frontier, right across from one side to the other, as many of you are here. And we have in our prayer ministry team those who are prophetic. You've been uh, vetted and you're part of our, our team all across here. Just, just leave spaces about three or four feet uh, uh, b beside each of you so you spread right across. There are people here this morning, I'm going to pray in just a moment. I want to purposely word it this way. There are people here this morning, you know what your gift is. But I'm convinced that for many, your gift is changing and it's like you're getting an upgrade. And for different reasons that happen. Sometimes it's circumstances. Other times it's because of faithfulness to, uh, as we're faithful in this, we receive this. And so there are people who are experiencing this change and you want to see your, your gift uh, grown and enhanced. I'm going to ask over to this side here, maybe from Lori over here, where if you come and you say, listen, I want prayer laying on of hands for an upgrade of the gift. I already know I've got a gift or gifts. Then over on this side, for those who say, I don't have a clue what my gift is. I don't know what it is. It might be a prophetic activation, a release that you get where something's confirmed in your heart. It might be where you think, I had prayer, I don't know what happened there. I've received so much when I didn't know what happened, quote, end of quote. God is faithful. This isn't hide and seek. This isn't, uh, I want this, but God probably won't give it to me. And so from here over, those who have gifts already, but you say, I want an upgrade. I want to see this matured. No counseling from those of you who are at the front here. No counseling with anybody. No giving, uh, you know, special guidance in any way. This is prayer, laying on of hands, and simply asking the activation to take place. I'm going to ask our ushers to assist so that you can be behind there as people are being prayed for and, and be helpful in that way. And so we ask, Father, send your Holy Spirit. We call Holy Spirit to come. We need you. We want you. We want a gift, a spiritual gift explosion in this place, in embassy. We love that you've given us talents. We love that you've given us ability. We love that you've shown us some of our strengths. But we want to know what it is to walk in the setting, the mingling, the sum, the supernatural that brings manifest the presence of the Lord. I thank you, Lord. I'm going to ask for you to come right now. Just move out of your seat over here. I'll just call it the upgrade. Over here, I need prayer so that I can have God just begin to move in my life that there is an identi identifying a release in this way 
We're going to ask our pastors to come, be part of that process. We're going to ask our worship team just to sing slowly and softly. So over here, you say, I want prayer to know my gifting. I want to walk in my gifting. I want to see that released. This is the time. There's new beginning. There's new beginning. I thank you, Lord, for new beginning. Earth's disorder is God's order. That's what's happening. It won't go through all of the year, but you'll see it. What appears to be a disorder is God ordering and organizing. Just begin to pray for people. I'm going to ask our ushers to assist us to come behind and you're able to follow. Father, I ask for all of us, whether we're uh, down the hallway in Kids Wing, we thank you that we have uh, kids pastors who believe in the gifts of Holy Spirit. Pastor Laura, you sowed seeds into us and our, our kids to know Holy Spirit and to walk in Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord, that you have gifts for our young people and our young adults, that they would be released. We welcome Holy Spirit. We welcome, we welcome Holy Spirit, the moving of graces, the motion of graces in this house. Let people discover who they are in Jesus and what it can become. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. There's a lady beside you, uh, Florida, just on your right side. I can't see from here. Uh, don't know whether I know you or not. It wouldn't matter. But I just see a glory shine on you. And I see that as an identity. It's, it's the identity of who you are in Jesus. That's how I understand it. And I, I, I saw it earlier. I was going to say something, and I just want to comment now. I just release more of Holy Spirit in your life, that there would be an overflow of the identity of who you are in Christ, because that's what glory is. It's a doxa. It's a, a knowing who you are in Jesus and all that Jesus has for you. And so there's something. I, I just release. I speak it from the platform here. I release the fullness of what Jesus has for your life in 2018, March the 11th, possibly it is today. I just release it right now that you would find yourself moving in a freshness because of the glory of the Lord, the presence of the Lord, the Shekinah, a greater fullness that would fill in and complement who you are in Jesus Christ. I bless you in this way. I bless you. We thank you, Lord. For those who need to go, you're welcome to go. If you want to just stay where you are in your seats, you can just bask in the presence of the Lord as the worship team begins to just lead us softly in worship.